We've definitely seen, in the last month, we've seen the most volatility since February and March. It, it hasn't been enormous, but everything is relative, and I think it just kind of feels like uh, people are ready for this next wave of volatility or selling because it's just it, things have been, you know, quote unquote, too good to be true. The, f the fact that we've rallied so hard so fast off of the March low when so little has improved, um, I think that is the reason why the last month has felt so scary, especially the fact that former market leaders have really taken a hit. Um, stocks like Apple and Amazon and Google and Facebook, those all felt invincible. It was sort of like, well, I don't really know what to buy. Um, I understand that the market seems to be going up, but these stocks, these market leaders have gone up, it felt like every single day. And what happened in uh, September, those stocks started to falter um, quite a bit, in fact. I think Apple, after the split, fell like 20%. Amazon was more than 15% off its high. Facebook is at least 15% off its high. So I, I think that kind of created additional anxiety. Really, we were down about 10% from absolute high to the absolute low uh, last week. It was 10%, which is really run-of-the-mill standard correction. You're supposed to expect at least one or two of those every year. Um, this year, though, there's just so much uncertainty. We, we've got these wildly varying GDP numbers from quarter to quarter because Q2 was so crazy low, uh, negative 35% or whatever annualized, and Q3 is expected to be positive, um, a big double-digit gain, uh, but people don't really know what to make of it yet. It's like the, the, everything is so lumpy. The data that we're getting is lumpy. Um, people are seeing their local stores and restaurants either close temporarily or permanently. It's really hard to know what to make of all of it, and I think... Um, there's a there's sort of a feeling of anxiety that goes along with just the fact that the market's been a little turbulent. The stock splitting, um, it, it, it seems to always create some confusion and um, it is kind of funny that people wanted to buy Apple either right before it splits or right after it splits. as. Um, and then, you know, Amazon has has not split and the, the shares are over $3,000. Tesla did split, like you mentioned. I, I don't know that I have a the, the right answer because I don't know that there is a right answer as to why these guys are choosing to split their stocks when something like Amazon is not. Um, the best explanation I've heard is that Apple is a member of the Dow and the Dow is a price-weighted index. So as Apple's share price got all the way up to $500 a share, it has an inordinate amount of impact on the Dow. And if they split their shares, they split the, the, the share price down to you know four for one, then it has a, a more reasonable impact on the Dow. Amazon is not in the Dow, it's in the S&P 500, which is market cap weighted. So it doesn't have the same uh, impact on its relative benchmark. So that makes sense to me as to why Apple would split. Um, besides that, the, but, but making the shares more or less attractive, it, it has no impact because they, they have four times as many shares outstanding and they just became uh, worth 25% what they were before they split. So, you know, there's uh, certainly was some volatility around that split, but I don't know that it was isolated to Apple because we saw the same volatility in Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, Google. So... Um, I think it's uh, a little bit of a nothing burger, right. you know, just as far as does it actually mean anything. I think it was more just to do with what benchmark the, those stocks um, are in. It's a question that everybody's asking and everybody's trying to answer at the same time, which is what do we do? you know, does this need to materially impact how I construct a portfolio? And I think the answer is yes. I, I you know, these are questions that started when the 10-year was at like 3%. Right. 
<laughs> you know, people couldn't understand why would you want to own bonds if you're locking in such a low interest rate. You know, you 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 kind of you know you're not going to do better than that over the next period of time, and it's been, it, that has not been the case because as interest rates have plummeted below two percent and then now below one percent, those bonds have all appreciated. So you, you kind of didn't really buy them for the coupon; you bought them for preservation of capital, and what you've ended up getting was appreciation also. So at some point, uh, that most likely stops. At some point, the, the, you can't get juice out of a stone. You cannot get much more appreciation out of a, an allocation to bonds. Do they still deserve a place in your portfolio? I think the answer is yes. And I think your expectations just have to continually change. It's like you're not going to, you're not going to make money from that part of your portfolio over the next 10 years. Over the next six months, maybe. You know, maybe there's a, a huge bout of volatility, whether it's around the election or something else, terrorist attack, you know, there's any number of things that can create volatility. And if that happens, if the stock market sells off 15, 20%, your bonds are probably going to gain value. In which case, you have done, you've been smart to own them. And you can choose at that point to rotate, you know, sell some or all of them and, and buy stocks, which have then gotten cheaper. But I don't, I don't think they have the same purpose in a portfolio as they did 10, 15, 20 years ago, for sure. Because you could actually count on bonds to make money back then. And now it's 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 like a cash alternative. It's something you do have to own, but I think your mentality needs to be different. Maybe it's not a, a long-term hold. Maybe it's a place to just park some money in the event that we have volatility or in the event that you know you need to access some money in the next three to six months. Um, but there's also other things that you can buy within this sleeve of fixed income. It doesn't need to be treasury bonds or high quality corporate bonds only. There's preferred stocks, there's mortgage bonds, there's uh, floating rate bonds, there's zero coupon bonds. There's a, there's a whole different um, group of, uh, of investment securities that qualify as fixed income that I think need to start making their way into clients' portfolios. So there's diverse, diversification within fixed income that's becoming really important to talk about. Assuming that things go how they're currently predicted to go, Biden's in the lead, you know, assuming he, he wins in early November, um, what could go right? Because that that outcome is currently being portrayed as a, a negative, if not a major negative, for the stock market and potentially the economy. Um, I don't personally subscribe to that because we just we don't have all the information. You know, I mean, just remember, four years ago, it was supposed to be a major negative if if Trump uh, won the election because of all the uncertainty. He's not, he's not a politician. He's gonna you know, go to war with a, a variety of different nations. We have no idea what this guy's all about. And it was, um, that was sort of seen as the most likely outcome if he were to win is the market's going to fall apart. And of course, we saw that on election night for a few hours. And then, um, you know, the market reverted to focusing on uh, earnings power of corporations. So, now, higher tax rates, should Biden get elected, is a legitimate concern, I think. Um, but there's also, there's not really a great way of isolating what lower corporate tax rates, what role that's played in the health of uh, the stock market for the last few years. Would stocks have done exactly, exactly the same had nothing changed with corporate tax rate? I don't know. I mean, we don't know. Um, there was a negative impact on the deficit and national debt. So um, I don't know where that all factors in. But what could go right if Biden is elected? I see a couple things. One, the impact on tax rates may not be as extreme as people are currently fearing or projecting. Um, you know, and you got to take into account the ways that individuals and corporations get around paying a, a full boat on, on their tax bill. So tax rates is really just one input when you're determining what your liabilities are. So 
what could go right. There's other things too, where we've had a, a handful of industries that have really struggled under the Trump administration. Energy, banks, financials, materials, indus industrials, healthcare. Um, these are all areas that maybe could do better under a Biden administration. Those are all areas that did better under Obama's administration. So if we were to just revert to the same policies that we had from 08 to 16, there's a pretty strong argument that could be made that we just see a sector rotation. And maybe the market continues its upward trajectory, but the contributing sectors and industries um, simply change from what it's been for the last four years. Um, you know, maybe maybe growth stocks take a huge breather and value catches up for some not entirely uh, obvious reason today. So that's definitely something that could go right. And another thing is that there's concern that if Biden's elected, we'll have a, a massive correction in the stock market um, if and when the announcement gets made that Biden has won the election. Uh, it's possible, you know, anything's possible, but it's also possible that we already saw the correction relating to Biden's win. You know, what just happened in starting in uh, late August and, and continuing throughout the month of September, we saw a pretty severe and an all around, all encompassing correction. Uh, everything got hit in September um, and, and the market leaders in particular got hit. So you could make the argument, and I guess I'm making the argument that maybe we already saw all of the froth that had built up from the March low get taken out of the market in advance of the election. So, you know, the market doesn't always do what you think it's going to do, and it doesn't always do something that makes sense in the short term. So the way I see it, there's plenty that could go right in the event uh, of a Biden pres presidency, of a Biden election.